Hello everyone and welcome to Fun Fridays. Today's topic is all about cereals. My name is Amy and for anyone who has tuned in before, welcome back and to anyone new, you're very welcome to Fun Fridays. So just before we start, as usual, I just want to mention the Dig In books. So these are available to download from our AgriAware website, and that is where you can find all of the lesson plans that these Fun Friday webinars are based on. And there are also activity sheets and worksheets for you to download to use in class or at home. So for today's webinar on cereals, the relevant Dig In topics are soils, the Irish farmer, and cereals and grasses. So they are all available to download from the website. Lots of people are joining here just in time for our 11 o'clock webinar. Oh, I actually had a shout out that I wanted to give to Clockfin National School. I had seen your tweets. Thank you very much for tagging us in your wool pencil toppers. They looked fantastic, everyone. Lots of gorgeous colors. And I'm not sure if they're here, but I also wanted to say hello to St. Joseph's National School. Hello, everyone. Thank you for those tags on social media. And hello to Canturk Boys. Hello, everybody. Super. So there's lots of people still joining. So we're going to get started very, very soon. Great, so the only thing I wanted to mention is if you had missed any of the other Fun Fridays webinars, either the first one on dairy or the second one on sheep, they can be caught up on YouTube. So those links have been sent to the, your teachers in the email that we sent out, but also they are up on the AgriAware YouTube page as well. So if you've missed anything, particularly the quiz challenger questions, you can catch up there to make sure that you have all of the right answers to enter the competition to possibly win a trip to Dublin Zoo. So again, that competition doesn't open until the 10th of December and that your teacher will receive a link with the, um, the form to fill out all of their answers. Great, so I think we can get started. So as usual, I'm just going to share my screen. I've just got a short presentation to give you an introduction to cereals. And then we will also have our educational video material and activity and finally our quiz challenger question. So let's get started. So we're going to have an introduction to cereals and cereal products. Our educational video is going to be the story of flour. So right from the wheat that is grown in the soil up to how we actually produce flour to be used to make bread and other bits and pieces. Our activity is going to be salt dough plaques. So I have mine already made and we're going to be making them together a little bit later on. And then finally, quiz challenger number three will be revealed at the end of the webinar. So the first point I want to make is when I talk about cereals, so I don't mean breakfast cereals. So maybe lots of us have breakfast cereal in the morning before we come to school. I've got a bowl of Cheerios in front of me here. So when I say cereals, when I'm talking about our material that we're learning for digging, I'm not talking about our breakfast cereals. I'm actually talking about cereals that grow in the soil that a farmer would look after that can then be processed and turned into different products that come from our cereals. So Cheerios are actually made out of a cereal called oats. And I'm sure lots of us are familiar with oats. We can use them to make porridge. They can be eaten cooked or they can also be eaten raw once they've been soaked. So Cheerios are actually made out of oats. And when I say cereal, I mean oats rather than actually the Cheerios that has been made from the oats. So I'm just going to see if you guys have any ideas. So a little bit of help from your teacher just for this point. So can you name a type of cereal? So remember, not a breakfast cereal. I'm talking about cereals that grow out of the ground from the soil. So something that is directly grown and looked after by farmers. So you can pop that answer into the Q&A. Super, so I'm just gonna take us through some examples, particularly of ones that we grow in Ireland. So the first one I saw lots of people had mentioned this one, wheat is an example of a cereal that we grow in Ireland. So wheat is one that we're really gonna focus on today because of course, we're going to learn about the story of flour. So you can make flour out of lots of different materials and lots of different grains, but one of the most popular ones is definitely flour and that is coming from wheat. So wheat is perfect if anybody answered that, well done. Another one is 
barley. So barley is another type of cereal. Um, barley is typically used to feed animals. We don't really eat that much of it in Ireland, but it's definitely possible. You can cook it just like you cook rice, cook it in water, and it can actually puff up and be eaten with a different meal. If anybody has ever had risotto, sometimes risotto is made with barley as well. So not as popular in Ireland to eat, but definitely it's one of our cereals that we're really good at growing here in Ireland. And then of course, oats is another example. So oats, we use it to make porridge. We can also use it as an ingredient in granola. If we have a cereal bar, a moussey bar, any of those ones. So oats is a really, really popular one. But a few other cereals that I had seen people mention, somebody said maize, excellent, that is perfect. That is also an example of a cereal. Here in Ireland, we mostly will actually use maize as animal feed, just like we do with our barley. We don't use it so much um, as a food product for ourselves. Usually if we're eating corn, which is another word for maize, we've probably bought it in from elsewhere. We make a lot of um, maize to feed all of our animals. What were some other examples? People had said rye. Again, we don't grow that much of it here in Ireland. If we ever have any rye products, we've usually bought it in from another country. So in Ireland, the main ones that we grow are wheat, barley, and oats. So there are most um, numerous. We grow the most of these three cereals. So just the, to note now at this point, so these three cereals and any of the other cereals that we've mentioned, they have one strong thing in common. And that is that they are all types of grasses. So that is the difference between a cereal and another kind of crop that we might grow, like a potato, for example. So all cereals are types of grasses, and that's what makes them the cereal family. Whereas when we have something like potato, it is a crop that we grow, and it is an example of a vegetable, but it's not a cereal because it's not a grass. So each one of these cereals they grow nice and tall in big fields and they all look pretty similar. You can even see that from just looking at those pictures that I have here. So they all have these stalks and they have these kind of ears at the top. So the wheat has their ear and their stalk, very similar with the barley as well. And then oats are usually pretty distinctive when you look at them because they kind of curve over to the side, but they are all types of grasses. Now, I would like some more help from your teacher if possible. So my next question is, in Ireland, we also grow grass. So we grow all of those cereals that feed people and they sometimes feed animals, but we also grow lots of green, green grass, which is the normal grass that you would see outside. And we grow lots of that in Ireland, but who do we feed our regular grass to? So our green grass. So we feed it to most of our farm animals. So any animal that grazes on our grass would be our goats, our sheep, cows, horses. I've had somebody say buffalo, brilliant. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Buffalo, they're, they look a little bit like cows, but they're much bigger. We have some in Ireland, we don't have loads, but buffalo, they absolutely do eat grass in Ireland. Brilliant, so the only kind of domestic or farm animals that we don't feed our grass to would be chickens. We don't feed them grass or any kind of poultry, and we don't feed pigs grass. But any of our other livestock animals, we usually will feed them some amount of grass. And of course, they also get to eat some of the cereals that we grow for people as well. So here is a picture of our cow, our lovely example of one of our livestock animals that feeds on grass. And I just wanted to highlight here as well that because cereals are also grasses, they're kind of in the same family. And in the lesson plans in Diggin, you will learn about grasses at the same time as learning about cereals. So if I just get my laser pointer here, I'm sure everybody is familiar with this product here. So this is something that we make out of grass and this is called hay. And hay is once we've mown this grass here, We've mown lots and lots of it and we dry it out, turn it over and put it into these circular bales or sometimes square bales that can be used to feed our animals in the winter time. So that's our hay, <clears throat> excuse me. And this black, this bale over here that's wrapped in black plastic is called silage. And this is grass that has been fermented. So it's not allowed to fully dry. There's still some moisture in it. And then we wrap it in black plastic. And when the sun shines down 
on the black plastic. It starts to heat up the grass inside the plastic and it starts to ferment it or make it pickled. And this preserves the grass for a long time and it means we are able to feed our animals throughout the winter. So when we cut the grass, we can make hay or we can also make silage. And this is another way that we feed our animals as well as feeding them things like wheat and barley and a bit of oats too. Super, so let's see, did your answers match up with my answers? So I have just have a few different examples. So I have chosen to give the examples of pasta. So pasta is definitely made out of wheat. So we make pasta out of flour. And usually if it's, if it's real Italian pasta, they'll make it with some egg as well, which of course comes from our poultry. So usually from our chickens. Flour, we're gonna be learning about the story of flour. And flour is made from wheat, which we see a little bit of it here and a little bit of it here. And it is made from the grain of wheat. And I saw lots of people say cake. Absolutely, we usually will use flour to make cake. Um, I have an example of a birthday cake here, and I actually just want to give a little shout out. I know that it was a person called Holly's birthday last week, so I just want to give that shout out there. So happy birthday to Holly for last week. Okay, great. So these are all the foods that can be made from wheat. Now we are going to take a look at our story of flour. I've made, again, like in previous weeks, I've made just a little video for us to watch together. This is the story of flour. There are many types of flour. One of the most popular types is one made out of wheat. Wheat flour can be used to make bread, cakes and pasta. Wheat is a plant and like many plants it starts off as a tiny seed. The seed is placed into the soil and will begin to grow when there is enough moisture. A tractor with a seed drill on the back can be used to insert the seed into the soil. This is much faster than doing it by hand. When the seed is ready, it starts to sprout. This is called germination. The wheat grows upwards and out of the soil so it can soak up all of the sunlight. Wheat is green at first. During this stage, farmers worry a lot about pests. Aphids like to eat the ears of the wheat and slugs like to munch on the leaves. If the wheat survives the pests, it turns golden. The grain is then ready to be harvested. Farmers use a combine harvester to harvest the wheat. This machine separates the grain from the stalk. The grain will be used for food for animals and some for people. The stalk can be used to make straw. The grain is collected in a trailer. Some of this grain will be sent to the factory to make flour. Flour is made by milling wheat grains. This machine grinds the grain into a fine powdery material, which becomes our flour. The flour is then put into bags and sealed. Large bags of flour are sent to bakeries and small bags of flour are sent to the shops. And that is the story of flour. Thanks for watching. So that was the story of flour. So just to highlight a bit more before we move on to our activity, just the parts that we use. So we learned in the video that there was mainly the stalk and then we also had the grain. So the grain is what we harvest to make our flour and that's all of those grain seeds that you saw being collected in the big trailer. And then the stalky bit here, this is the part that use, is used to make straw and straw is mostly used for animal bedding. This entire area here, you might have heard of a wheat ear before. So that's this bit up here that will contain any of the seeds and also the tiny little flowers that the wheat plant actually has. So they're contained in the ear up here. And then of course, because wheat is a plant, it has leaves as well. So these are the leaves and any of our cereal plants They'll all have leaves too. And like the video said, this is the part that any of the slugs, they like to munch on the leaves. And this can be really, really harmful to the plants because some of us might know that leaves are extremely important because when the sun shines down, the leaves actually collect all of the sunlight and this helps the plant to make itself food. 
So leaves are really important and we don't want them to be damaged. Now, we're going to shortly be moving on to, let's make, apologies, we're going to be shortly moving on to our salto activity. But I just want to show you what I've done with my salto before we move on. So I have already made mine. And again, I've made you a video to either watch along or you can work along with me. We're going to make salt dough plaques. So this is what they look like. I've made one with my initials and it is just a simple recipe of salt, water and flour. We've learned about the story of flour and we can make this into a moldable dough that we can make little plaques out of. So I've put my initials on this, AG for Amy Gray. And then I also collected a small little object that I pressed into my dough and this made a flower. So this is my salt dough and this is what you'll either be making today or at a later date. So with this activity, your teacher has been given the ingredients. If you're working along now, all you need is two, stable, two tablespoons of flour, heaped tablespoons. We need four tablespoons of water, one tablespoon of salt, and we need a spoon to mix it up. So let's take a look at the method by watching our video. Let's make salt dough. We will need a spoon, a bowl, some water, and of course, our main ingredient, which is flour. Add two tablespoons of flour to a bowl. And when this is done, prepare your salt. One tablespoon of salt will be used to add into the mix. And this should help to preserve your salt dough so it doesn't go moldy as quickly. Make sure to combine the salt with the flour so that there are no chunks of salt in your dough. When this is done, add your tablespoon of water and another, number three, and the last one, number four. Mix this up in your bowl until it is fully combined with the flour and salt. Use the spoon at first. This can help to combine all of the ingredients together. And when the dough looks as if it's ready to be picked up, you can start to use your hands. The dough should feel tacky, but not sticky. Make sure you get all the bits of flour that are left over in your bowl before you remove the dough. If your dough is too wet, you can add a small bit more flour. And if it is too dry, add just a sprinkle of water. Mine is ready to be taken out of the bowl. It shouldn't leave any residue on your hands. If your hands come up clean, your dough is ready to be transferred onto your surface. This recipe bakes enough for two dough balls. Make sure your surface area has enough space for you to be able to roll your dough balls. Now to make your plaque, we just want to flatten our dough ball out as much as we can. Try not to make it too thin, but not so thick that it'll take a long time to dry. You can use your fingers to pat it down, or you can also put it onto the surface and use the palm of your hand to squish it down even further. The 
the first plaque I'm going to show you is one with my initials. So my initials are AG and you can see by using a pencil you're able to carve your initials into the Salto. You can even write your entire name if you have space. Move it to one side and when you're done, leave the dough in a warm place so that it can dry. There is another option to use a small object to make an impression in your dough. I have a small clay flour that I'm going to use to press into my dough. This will make the shape of the flour into your dough plaque. After a few seconds, you can remove your small object from your dough. Do this very carefully. You can see that there has been an impression of the flower left in my dough. When my plaques are dry, I will paint them. Yeah, so that was our salt dough plaque recipe and I'd shown you mine before. So these are the exact ones that I'd made in the video. And I just allowed them to dry and you can see that they're nice and dry and I have actually painted them. So I've just painted in the impression of the flower for this one. And then I just painted along the little markings that I had made with my pencil just to give it a bit of color. So that was a very easy activity. So the salt is very important when you're making the salt dough because if you don't add the salt, if you leave the flower plaques um, in a nice warm place, they can go moldy. But if you add salt in, it actually preserves them and stops them from growing those little bits of mold. So you won't be able to keep them forever, but you will be able to keep them for a few weeks. So they're a nice alternative to painting rocks or different things like that. This is something that you can make very, very easily. Great, so we're just about ready for our quiz challenger question. So I hope everybody is ready. Super. So remember with the quiz challenger question, so this is number three. So just to remember the question and to remember the answer as well, and you will submit this answer on the 10th of December when we send your teacher the form for all of the answers. So I've got my quiz challenger prop here, and if everybody's ready, I'm going to read it once and then I will repeat it afterwards. So if everybody's ready, listening carefully. What is the name of the machine that is used to harvest the wheat. And I'm going to read it again. What is the name of the machine that is used to harvest the wheat? So that was quiz challenger number three. So we're well on our way to being ready to enter the competition. Super, I think everybody's okay. Nothing in the q and A's there. So thanks everyone for joining me for Fun Fridays number three. Next week is going to be Halloween themed. So I know it's going to be most of our last day before we finish up for midterm. So we're going to be doing a Halloween theme. There'll be another activity, a Halloween related activity. And we're going to be learning a little bit more about pumpkins as well and how we actually grow them in Ireland. So thanks again for all of your participation. Oh, last thing, special request. Happy birthday to Jerry in first class in Rathcarn. Happy birthday, Jerry. Okay, that's it, everyone. I'll see you next week for our lovely Halloween themed fun Fridays. Have a lovely weekend and the rest of your day. Goodbye. <laughs>